Hello and welcome to Design for Digital Seminar and Creating a Website Brief with myself, Lawrence Tilly, Web Designer and Director of Design for Digital, a website company based in Bath, helping SMEs transform their online presence. So, we're here today to understand how to create a website brief. Now, whilst this sounds quite straightforward to produce, many website briefs I see miss out some very important points, which actually shapes the quote and approach to the build. Therefore, I'm going to be introducing you to the key factors you should consider when creating your new website brief. I've already covered choosing a business domain last month, so if you missed it, please check my website designfordigital.com for video highlights. Okay, during this session we'll be considering the impact of the following factors. Design. Is your branding ready for the new website launch? Content. Content is king, as Google says, so don't get dethroned with poor copy. Marketing. How are you looking to market your website and what channels will you use? Deadlines. Have you taken into account deadlines for launch? And last but not least, budget. You might know your budget, but should you actually give this away? Now, why do we need to create a website brief? I suppose without knowing the full picture, using research, understanding your goals and looking at your competition, you'll find that your website is less successful when it launches. It's also going to take more time for your web design company to understand what you're after. So, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Um, let's go into design, the importance of getting your design consistent. Okay, so consider how your logo and corporate identity will be reflected on the website. Whilst main company websites should incorporate their business identity, such as business cards, flyers and other marketing material for consistency, if you're launching a new product or brand, you may actually want to consider an alternative set of branding, depending on the strategy for your enterprise. Next, do you think you should actually base your design and layout of the website on what your competitors are doing? It's sensible to research your industry to see what they've done right and what they've done wrong. Don't be afraid to criticise your own current website if you have one, and actually analyse what is and isn't working. There's plenty of tools to do that, you've got Google Analytics, and you know even just asking friends or relatives if you don't have anyone in your business to help you look at your website, that's always going to help get a critique of your website. Next, how will your audience perceive the web design? Try to think about how your visitors, customers, will use the website initially. Whilst you may need to adapt it after user feedback, understanding their needs will help improve your chances of success. Try to make navigation simple, avoiding layered navigation where possible, and definitely consider responsive web design. It's crucial these days for your SEO, and you're going to need it because everyone's using phones and tablets as well as desktop computers. So, next, let's look at how content is going to shape your website success. Now, do you think it's wise to copy from other websites' content or use the same text copy from your old website for this new one? Well, I don't believe so, um, and Google and other search engines will realise if you've copied content from other sources, so it's wise to steer clear. Even using the old content you had on your other sites will not help rankings. You're duplicating that content. Now, who do you think would be best to create this website content for you? Content writer, maybe? The web design company, you're asking? No. I think you'll find the answer is you. It's your business, and you're more involved to write at least the first draft about your business. However, that's not to say you shouldn't ask opinions from external influencers. Who can suggest keywords and offer insights into how new visitors will perceive your content? since you're probably too close to the business to be subjective. Where will you source your images and videos from as well? I mean, you can use stock photography sites. Um, they're commonly seen on company websites. But there are cases where this can feel very impersonable and reflect badly on your business. 
I mean, why are they not showing their faces? Is this a real company I can trust? I mean, these are some of the thoughts visitors may ask themselves. So getting professional, true-to-life photographs and videos created will engage your visitors and give them a better impression of your business. Now, do you want to update the content yourself? I mean, there's various different content management systems like WordPress or Drupal, which will help you update your content and create new content without you having to ask the web design company each time. The extra investment in setting this up will soon be returned after a few months. Now, let's go on to our next topic, marketing. Advertising and promoting your website. Do you need to advertise your website online? Whilst it's usually down to your strategy, it's definitely worth considering if your site is new. It's going to take time to climb the rankings and gain trust with your search engines, and you might not be able to wait. Advertising will help bridge this gap whilst you build organic results. Research relevant keywords for your content as well to aid your marketing and SEO. While this will no doubt be discussed with your web company, it's good to start looking at the keyword phrases so you can start the ball rolling in the right direction. Also, what audience are you marketing this website to? Describe your potential customers in your brief. Pay special attention to their income, interests, gender and age. And will you want to track the visitors and see the effect of any campaigns that you have? Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager will help you track your visitors after putting code into every web page. This is something your web design company can help you do. There are implications, however, when you do this that will need to be explained in your privacy and cookie policies because you will be tracking users and, especially in EU law, we need to state that clearly and sometimes have a pop-up just to say that you'll be collecting this information for your own marketing purposes. Okay. The next topic is deadlines and getting your website online in time. You'd be amazed to hear that most companies I meet don't specify a deadline in their brief. It's usually ASAP or as soon as possible. Actually having agreed a suitable and realistic deadline will ensure that not only you are confident of getting the site live then, but your web design company knows you're serious about timings and this gives you a performance measure of how well they produce the site too. Next to think about is, are there any external deadlines the designer should be aware of? It's no good going live with your website if you haven't got stock of products. Neither is it sensible to launch your site a day before advertising it nationally, when search engines haven't had time to list you properly. Have you also considered time for beta testing or stress testing the website? Testing for the inevitable flood of users will reap its benefits when it comes to customer satisfaction and sales where appropriate. Not accounting enough time for testing or even a beta phase into your plans could harm your hard efforts. So the all important question and the last point to my argument is your budget. Do you think you should give away your budget in the brief? Many of my clients avoid discussing costs expecting me to come up with a quote. In actual fact creating a website can be achieved in a variety of ways and Knowing that all-important budget will help establish straight away how to approach the build and even give you a reality check on your ambitions for this website. Should you get a breakdown of costs in a quote? This may sound a good idea so that you can pick and choose the features that you want, but you may have a better bargaining tool with a web design agency if you stick to an overall quote when it comes down to negotiating. Sometimes it's also tricky to separate costs of some features, especially when they're interconnected. Also consider your negotiation tactics. If you negotiate a cheaper deal, you can usually expect to receive a compromise on the features and quality of service. If you're expecting the earth from your website at a knockdown price, then I'm afraid you're going to be left disappointed. So, what have we learnt? Hopefully you now have a better understanding of the key factors to create your website brief. To recap, here again is a brief summary of our findings. Design. Think about your corporate brand identity. Also think about the audience reaction to web design. Next, content. Don't copy or duplicate your content. Write it yourself if you can, but also get external opinions. 
Marketing. Are you advertising online? Are you advertising offline too? Consider how you're going to incorporate that into your website. Deadlines. What are the deadlines to consider? Also, advertising. Think about the deadlines for those or product launches you need to consider. Create a realistic deadline even if you don't think you need one. And last but not least, budget. Sharing your budget with a web design company will help save you the time and hassle of going backwards and forwards and also you can probably get a realistic set of quotes from many different web design companies. Well, thank you for joining me to learn about how to create your new website brief. Please remember that there is another session coming up next month where we'll be looking at managing your Google My Business page. This is essential for businesses, especially public facing ones, to promote yourself and there are some important benefits for ranking organically too. Don't forget, if you need any help or assistance with your website and don't know who to turn to, please contact me either via phone on 07793-226869 or email info at designfordigital.com. I'd be happy to hear from you. Thank you very much.